you get up and howl about America and democracy. There is no America. There is no democracy. We no longer live in a world of nations and ideologies. The world is a college of corporations, inexorably determined by the immutable bylaws of business. The world is a business. And I have chosen you to preach this evangel. <laughs> Shout to the homies, Carnegie, OG, Willie Randolph Hearst, Baruch, Rockefeller, the real Rockefeller, my main bitch, Leona, part of little Louis XIII, Scott Rothstein, Jack Abramoff, hold your head, my yeah. royal child niggas, let's uh, get this money. I spent my day peppering America overseas, pension for the workers, nigga, please, embezzlement, etiquette, private settlement, I'm better with Confederate rhetoric from my mansion in Connecticut, foreclosed with the clothes out of tenement, I twist words like a speech impediment, I hope you got good credit, bitch, if not, better get a new job with benefits, while I play golf with niggas and get cheddar with, new money buys brand new carrots, my old money bought your great grandparents, you got grills in your mouth, I ain't mad at you. I own every gold mine in South Africa Thanks baby, you made me a billion Plus I own a building For each one of my children's children That's the shit Snort coke in the whip, miss USA sucking my dick Yeah, what? Fuck the law, cause real jailers for suckers I go to country club prison, you dumb motherfuckers I am the one percent Fucking bitches, yeah You know my CEO corporate steez Please overthrow governments overseas In a breeze Politicians in my pockets for a few hundred G's So if I'm ever in court, my assets are never free If I were speaking to Obama I think that I would have to say Where is your heart? Where is your integrity? Where is your humanity? Do you know what those words mean? Do you have any concept? of what those words mean. You, 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 have, you have used and abused and hurt all the people, including black people, and you continue to do so. You speak in your fancy language using your fancy rhetoric, but you continue to hurt the people nationally and globally. Are you human? I would have to ask you, Barack Obama, are you human? Do you even know what being human means. You better stop and think. You better stop and think. Because both of them, Democrats and Republicans, their, their so-called leadership, and I call it their misleadership, feed from the same corporate, national, and global trough. So the Obama deception is a deception against all of the people, nationally and globally. And I want you to keep that in mind. It's important that we keep that in mind. It's, it's a national and global deception. The wars, the perpetual wars that we have, the perpetual corporate hegemony, and all I mean by corporate hegemony is domination. This is going on by design, all right? We have to understand that it's not that complicated. Actually, it's very simple. You know, they say that the best tricks are the old tricks and the old tricks are the best tricks. You know why? Because they work. But the old tricks stop working once people wake up. Because you can't fool all the people all the time. And more and more people are waking up to this deception. And it is a despicable deception. All of us have been deceived. Regardless as to what ideology we may think we adhere to, we have all been deceived. We have allowed ourselves to be deceived. And this just goes on and on and on uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a circle. It's cyclical. But what we have to do, break out of the box, break that cycle. We can do that. We've got to do that. You know, somebody once said that every generation needs a new revolution. No, that wasn't Malcolm X. That was Thomas Jefferson. And he was absolutely correct. I attempted to... Uh like um, a lot of black people in um, America and um, a lot of black people that didn't uh, just kind of join the club, so to speak, um, and just kind of go along with what 
anything that the Obama administration kind of put out simply because there was this overall feeling about Obama um, in the black neighborhood as though he's the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. And um, we know that's not true. So whether it's Obamacare, gun control, abortion, um, the bailouts, or whatever it, um, it was pertaining to, a lot of people just went along with it without looking into it. And I think that's the first mistake that we make simply because we need to look at the, uh, the agenda as opposed to the individual. There's a beautiful picture that depicts the bird of freedom, the eagle, which represents America flying high and soaring over um, all the other uh, lands and governments and systems that are set up. So when we get into this particular discussion about Democrats wanting this and controlling that, I mean, Republicans not agreeing to this and controlling the House and this kind of thing. We have to understand something that it's the same people that control both parties. So when we talk about the Hegelian dialectic principle, of course you have the Reds, the Republican Party, and the Blues, which is the Democratic Party, and no one even uh, talks above a whisper when it talks about uh, interjecting and, and, and creating a third party which can balance out the two. Those both, those both of those particular parties are controlled by the same people. And if you do not understand anything about this particular talk today, understand that. The same people control both parties. And we need to understand that from that this point moving, moving forward. We want to talk about all of the president's men. And I want to talk about three men that I mentioned in my book, The Psychological Covert War on Hip Hop, The Illuminati's Takeover of Hip Hop. In the 10th chapter, I talked about Common, who was invited to the White House. I talked about Ludacris, who wrote a song for Barack Obama, who was invited to the White House. I talked about Jay-Z, who signed off on gay marriage and endorsed it, who was invited to the White House. I talked about um, Will I Am, who wrote a song, Yes We Can, who was invited to the White House. And we all know Yes We Can backwards is Thank You Satan. Um, we could talk about a few other people that was invited to the White House. But why is hip hop in bed with Barack Obama, who is in bed with the global elite, who is in bed with the banksters, who is in bed with the neocons? We have to understand this particular dynamic so it runs deep. It affects art and culture, entertainment. Although you just think it's, a, it's an opportunity to be in the White House because it looks good on your discography. You don't even understand what you're doing and who, are who you are aligning yourself with and what agenda and you, that you're carrying out unknowingly. So when we talk about the Illuminati takeover of hip-hop and we talk about Jay-Z and a lot of people say, well, Jay-Z is, is, is the Illuminati. Well, no, he's not. He's carrying out the uh, Luciferian uh, demonic agenda of the Illuminati. The masses of the, of, of the people that have voted for Barack Obama uh, was, was, was uh, groomed well via MTV, BET, and some of the multinational corporations that influence entertainment, arts, and culture. And don't you ever damn think that MTV, VH1, and uh, all of the other alphabet boys are not in cahoots and in bed with Barack Obama and those that control the media to carry out the agenda. That's how they carry out the agenda from unsuspecting masses of the people who carry out the agenda unknowingly. We need to understand that. How do we climb out of this proverbial bag that we're in? Um, together, one mind, one spirit, one voice, one agenda, and if everyone is saying the exact same thing, they have no other choice. If Alex Jones is saying the same thing, Professor Griffin, Public Enemy is saying, um, you guys are saying the same thing. Rappers are saying the same thing. Politicians who are not afraid, who stand up and speak for uh, what they truly believe in. Um, if you truly believe in the Second Amendment, then they have no other choice but to say, you know something? We have to sit and listen. And then we have to have someone in those offices, in the political arenas, that can actually speak for the masses of the people, both the black and white and every color in between. Do we have that? No, these sellout cowards that are there 
as politicians up on the Hill and in the White House, that they won't utter a word to speak for the masses of the people. So then I asked the question to you, what the fuck is democracy about? Can you imagine all of us in this room get caught in the spider web and I'm the only one that the spider chooses to eat? <laughs> no, we all in this together. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> one of Wesley, uh, Wesley Snipes' movie, I uh, forget which one, which one it was, one of the characters said, you know, CMB, the Cash Money Brothers, we all we got. So y'all better get used to the idea. Um, we're going to have to lock arms and become and get in sync with those of us that just don't necessarily look like us. Get f***ing used to it. The war is on. You understand what I'm saying? So when I turn to a, a brother of mine like Alex Jones without looking back, if I say, look, bro, pass the ammo, then pass the ammo. And you can't deny the fact that Alex Jones at Infowars.com, Prison Planet, or which, whatever entity it is, did he not pass the ammo? I heard Dick Gregory say that um, if you see some of the tricks um, that the CIA are pulling across the global landscape, shit, that's going to make uh, Hitler blush. It's f***ing ridiculous. The mass murders that are going on to establish democracy in these places. And then when it comes to the media, listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about those sincere, real, hardworking photojournalists and journalists like you guys that are out there getting the real story and the story that's behind the scenes. But we rarely hear from you guys on a global scale, on, 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 on a, a sound bite that's put on repeat on CNN every 10 minutes, that's playing through the air phones and on people's uh, airport and on people's phones. We rarely get that. We have to create websites, mirror websites, um, send out um, uh, information through the, uh, through the phones and through phone apps and this kind of thing to directly reach the people. Gun control. Um, we have to talk about the amendments. Now, just once again, I'm not playing the race card. When we talk about the Constitution or constipation of the United States of America, you have to understand it means something different to white Europeans as it means to black people. Um, oh, the reason why we call ourselves public enemy. <laughs> it's the whole idea of black people being written in as three-fifths of a human being. Now, what kind of bull is that? I mean, the tape is rolling, but we're just speaking, of having a fireside chat right now. How in the hell can I respect the Constitution that wrote me in as subhuman? So then when we go look at the Constitution, we can honestly say that a pig, man, an animal is whole pig, five-fifths pig, um, a snake, a gerbil, a damn fly is a whole fly, a whole cow, a whole pig, five-fifths. But when it comes to black people that gave birth to everyone on the planet, and we can debate that, you write black people in as three-fifths of a human being, and then you want to try to amend it as though that's cool. That's like doing a puffy remix on the Constitution. F*** out of here. I'm not buying into it. So when we talk about rights, black people have no rights in America because we're not human. We're subhuman. So then when we stand up and speak to these particular things, we're speaking from a different perspective than white people. And we need to understand it. But the beautiful thing I like about what's going on, especially with what Alex Jones is doing is the fact that all of us are in the same boat. <laughs> so get used to it, white people. <laughs> you got to start living like black people have been living. And I'm laughing about it simply because now the gender, uh, the, uh, the race uh, lines have been blurred now to the point where we're forced to work together. Now you're forced to see it how we see it and we're forced to see it how you see it. Now what are we going to do? Be ignorant and keep arguing over the race card and the race issue? No. We have to come together on some real issues that affect us all regardless of your complexion. We, we have to understand it and, and, and understand it from uh, black people, my, my perspective, and heart, a heartfelt black point of reference. Because if I say I support the Second Amendment, then we move on to the Third, Fourth, Fifth, 
then it becomes a problem because my is going to get caught in a web that wasn't designed for me to get the fuck out of. Okay, let's just be honest and let's talk. After all of it's said and done, we're sovereign, we're over the hill, we don't have to look back, that door's closed. Can I actually hook up with other people that's not my complexion and we could put something in place where all of us are sovereign and we can have arms and, and enjoy the rights and the freedoms that everyone else on the planet enjoys? You right, who wouldn't want that? As a human, I would want that, plain and simple. But we don't have that today in America, now do we? Listen, law is only as good as the people enforcing the law. Am I correct? So that if they're not going to um, support, protect, defend, honor, uh, uphold the very same law that they put in place, what good is it? George Bush Sr. and Jr on the Constitution. Am I right or wrong? And there was only a handful of people that spoke up. And the majority of them sold the f*** out and took the payoff. Plain and simple. And then the ones that did speak up, the brave white people that did speak up to speak to other white people, because I can't speak to the vast majority of white people. I can do my songs through the public enemy um, um, medium of hip-hop and music and a lot of young white people get it. But these old who refuse to give up the whole idea of an, a black, having black people be inclusive and, and share the benefit of what the Second Amendment has to offer, f out of here. It ain't gonna happen. Yes, these men and their hypnotized followers call this a new order. It is not new. And it is not order.